Hey everybody, it's day 21. We're starting the same place uh, we were yesterday, but today we're going to do a special orchard tour of the Blue Sky Farm Orchard, and uh, we're going to plant a cedar tree. My question to you is where do trees come from? You know, the mass of the tree, where does it come from? And the question I ask, I ask that of everybody every year, uh, for the past 50 years <laughs> because it's this month is the 50th anniversary of the very first Earth Day uh, that started in 1970 so of course it's 2020 it's 50th year it's gonna be on April 22nd same as every year but let's make this entire month Earth Month let's forget that it's this weird first time in a century crisis we're going through having to distance from one another um, physically Let's just think of it as the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And actually, we're, um, you know, you know, this is a great, great question. I'm going to, yesterday I put in some russet potatoes that were organic. We described that yesterday and how. Um, I'm going to put in some, a little red potato today. And I didn't quite push these in enough last yesterday. And so I'm going to push those in a little further and continue this a little bit. And then uh, this entire thing is going to become the middle row will be potatoes, uh, excuse me, the last row right here, this row is going to be too soddy to be able to plant. This third row will be potatoes, second row we're not sure yet, first row is wildflowers. Um, but my question too is if you cut off, just like the question about planting a tree, if you cut off a bit of this uh, potato right here, organic potato, and you put it in the ground, like this, with the uh, sprouts kind of going up, and you bury it, and it turns into a bunch of potatoes under here, like that could turn into five, maybe ten potatoes if it was an amazing crop, and then there's the big bushy plant um, out here. Where does that come from? You know, that's my question is where do, um, where does that mass of those come from? Do they just, it just, does it suck it out of the ground? Does the soil all of a sudden magically turn into potato tubers as well as a big bushy plant? Where does that mass come from? Well, common sense, the first guy who um, ever, uh, I'm going to put in a couple more, the first guy who ever experimented with that in the 1800s. Uh, planted a plant in his um, house and a potted plant and then he uh, you know waited every day and he kept watering it and it got heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier and big plant big potted plant growing in his house and um, you know he concluded logically because before science is developed the only thing you can use is common sense right and common sense would say well, the only thing he added was water, so that must have been where the mass of the plant came from. Well, it turns out he was wrong, and science developed. Um, the, the answer to this question, oh, there's a nice worm right there. The, uh, might have to eat the potato, we'll see. Um, the answer to this question defies common sense, as does pretty much everything once you uh, study it. And then it no longer, once it becomes common knowledge, it becomes common. Uh, sense. Kim just showed up, which is great because we're about to do our orchard tour. Um, and uh, so by the end when we're planting the cedar tree, and by the way we're planting a cedar tree because it's the best tree to plant, here's another hint, to sequester carbon uh, to reverse the effects of climate change. And so that's going to be our big celebration. We do that every year in honor of Earth Day. Um, can you grab that? Thanks. Appreciate it. Kim's here. Um, and we're about to start our orchard tour, but uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll get back to that. All right, so the first row along the um, driveway right there. You mean employees? Yeah, go look at the first one right there. These are cherry trees we put in. And um, we put those in because we, along the driveway, we want something very pretty, but of course, everything we put into the orchard, we want to be productive as well. Uh, you might notice that there are fence posts along there, 
and we have to get that fence up by tomorrow um, and uh, in order to keep the deer out of here otherwise they are going to go for the cherry trees first as a matter of fact they've gotten a pruning by a deer a couple years ago last year or the year before Every yeah. year we've had them, they've been pruned by deer. Yeah. And we, I, have we had a cherry yet? We've seen cherries. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we've had some cherries. I've eaten them. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Not very I don't many. Think I've eaten them. <laughs> this next row right here is our pear uh, row, and we have, and we do kind of a different um, cultivation of each of the. Oh yeah. Each of the uh, different species of fruit that we like to do, and so this. Um, and you might notice they're all flowering right now, which is why yesterday we did mason bees, release the mason bees so they, they get pollinated because pears, you have to make sure they get pollinated in order to develop pears. You don't get a ton off of every tree um, unless it's perfectly pollinated and such. Down underneath is, this is another kind of extension of our permaculture lesson from yesterday, is um, what's called, well, you could call it a guild. And uh, right down there, we've got strawberries growing. Uh, we also have a bunch of <laughs> buttercups and grasses and stuff. We have to really tackle this weeding job, uh, like in the next couple, this week for sure, in order to stay on top of this so that the strawberries don't get uh, pushed out of there. But anyway, this is called a guild. And if we had a few layers of this in this guild, we would have what's called a food forest. And so what we're trying to develop out here is a food forest. All this grass that we're still having to mow between, we're going to try to cover this whole thing with food eventually and not have to come out here and mow. Uh, right now we try to make it look as, I don't know, aesthetically understandable for Acceptable. people as possible <laughs> as for being in town uh, because that's kind of important to kind of introduce people slowly to Do you want to mention any varieties of anything? Or? No, that's okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a little too much detail for the short okay. amount of time they have. Okay, what do we have in our next row here? And look at the flowers! The, the two flowers. The two flowers. <laughs> yep, that's our nectarine. We have yeah. one nectarine. Mm -hmm. And then there's three varieties of peaches. Mm -hmm. And then we have two apricots. Yeah. Now the they apricots, yeah, the apricots don't do so well because they flower too early mm -hmm. in the spring around here. And then, of course, it always freezes and then it kills the, yeah. Uh, yeah. And we got one apricot last year. Yeah. And so <laughs> the apricots will probably, the one thing that you you know, you have to get used to if you're going to have an orchard is if it doesn't work, Did you, you can take it out. All of these guys? Yeah, and in between all of these, being Blue Sky Farm, in between all of the um, the trees, the rows of trees, and by the way, they're uh, lined up aesthetically pleasing, so uh, both 90 degrees and 45 degrees, so you can see that they kind of go in that direction as well. But in between each is okay. our different kinds of blueberries. And so you can see that they are leafing out. Look yep, at that. These are called Darrow or Darrow. Mm -hmm. And then we have Auroras. Then we have my favorite, Early Blue. Yeah. And actually, that's not true. This one right here is... Um, didn't didn't we... Oh, no, wasn't that Cynthia's? No, Cynthia. Or, oh, yes, it is. Cecilia, it is. sorry. Cecilia, Cecilia gave us that. Lemonade. Yeah, a friend gave us that. Yeah, um, sadly, did. another friend who passed away this past she year. Did. Yes, yeah. neighbor. Um, okay, and then this next row... Uh, what do we got going on? So these <laughs> are gummies. Oh my gosh, gummies! These taste really great. Anybody wonder where gummy bears come from? Oh my goodness, oh, look no. at that. We're going to have to do a whole slug episode. Yes, we're going to have to do an entire slug episode. Oh my <gasps> gosh, look at that. Ah, i got to go get, get my bag. Yep, I okay. Just go get it. Every oh gosh, evening, oh, there's so many. Every okay. evening we slug hunt. That's how we keep the slugs down. Oh my gosh. It's uh horrible. works better than pretty much anything else and we'll we'll it's do really a slug fun. episode. Yeah, we'll do a slug episode. Yep. Anyway, so it's gummies and then we've had we have a couple spaces available and we have an amazing aronia back there that was given to oh, us. Oh, well, let's do it on the way back. Oh. Yeah, go through. There's also the one that's um, a lot of green leaves right there is a current. Uh, and then we have some spaces to fill in down there that we haven't uh we tried a couple things that didn't work pawpaws, yeah. but i didn't shade them properly this uh, is a black oh, current yeah, look at that look at, look that. at the nice the flowers flower. are going to be coming out yep. soon cool all right um okay. next row they don't taste great unless they're frozen <laughs> in my humble opinion yeah so the next row is kind of a edible and medicinal yes and you can see the leaves coming out now this on this really one. one. Oh yeah really nice and they are really easy to propagate as well because they come out almost like in rhizomes growing way out. And so it's probably going to take over the strawberry bed here. But um, 
Yeah, tons of slugs you have to get on this. Um, so excited to get these. But of course. You can bring that up a little yeah. bit because you're looking at the ground there. So we have black, so elderberry, black, blue, and blue elderberry. And then black and blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so elderberries are cool. This entire thing is one leaf. It's called a compound leaf. Uh, it has five, or actually the blue elderberry have seven or nine uh, compound parts on the leaf. And again, the blueberries in between, strawberries underneath. And this row is our apple row. And yeah. we actually, uh, didn't we? Yes, that's why it looks okay. so funny. Yeah. All right, take a look at this down here. our very first attempt at grafting. Yeah. Look at that little beauty right there. And of course, all these branches coming up, we need to cut off because they're from below. Yeah, down graft. here, it's probably grafted on a um, quince. Most of the times they are grafted, most of your fruit trees are grafted onto a quince or can be grafted onto anything. Well, not anything, but quince is often used. It's very sturdy. So, um, yeah, gra look up grafting. That would be an amazing yeah. uh, entire episode as well. But uh, this is our apple row. We had to take, we got varieties that are supposed to be resistant to the apple. Different apple diseases, yeah, disease. but it turned out that our very, so this one's a Chehalis. It's a lovely mix of big, um, huge apples. Um, but at the very end, we had a Williams Pride that's resistant to a whole lot of things, but apparently not resistant to canker. Yeah. Because it got canker, and we, and had, we had to, to just cut it out. out. Mm, I felt really bad. Yeah, you have to do it. Yeah. Uh, this is this our is plum new. row. New one. Yes. I'm really excited. I know. So this one's a Juanetta. So this really one should be like a little beautifully. beautiful plum. Yeah. But uh, we have a, every single variety is different. The one that I think is really funny is our third one, oh, which is down. really big. By the way, underneath here, I put some different kinds of trailing. Um, Raspberries, yeah. yeah. But this one right here. So Chris came home one day, and he'd been to the store, and he found this just terrible-looking, practically dead, yeah, dead stick. Yeah, they were to basically save. giving it away. And it's supposed to be an ultra dwarf weeping Santa Rosa which plum, which is not, which is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> and it produces these incredible plums. But I'm it so is shading. It. Um, we did want these plums because we want the plums to get really big and shade our pond that we installed here. Yep. By the way, there was a really beautiful, uh, just a second ago when I was out here, uh, Pacific Chorus tree frog, I believe right here somewhere. Let's see if we can catch up to it. Yep, there it went. Oh, oh did it just go in the yep. water? Mm -hmm. There it goes. Oh, there it goes underneath, swimming. There you are, cutie pie. Oh, I hope you, everybody on Facebook can see you. Oh, aren't you beautiful? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay, let's not disturb you anymore. Anyways, too bad we didn't find you during our amphibian hunt the other day. <laughs> All right. So that's our apple row. Now let's go in here with this is our grapes. We've got... Um, what are these? Some kind of a red? We have... Um, oh, let's see. It's like... Mercury and Venus and Jupiter or something. I don't know. They're a couple <laughs> different planets. Anyway. But they're beautiful they're mostly red. these red purple. Yeah, and they're fantastic. So no seeds. They're great. And we have some greens that are really great. And they're amazing frozen. Which yes, is great because we, they're you know, you get them. so many. You don't know what to do with them unless you make wine or jam or whatever. You can actually freeze these and use them in pancakes, mm. things like that, like a blueberry. However, over here, before we do those, oh. uh, we have green grapes. And those you have to eat fresh. They're so sweet. It's kind of like um, having, uh, you know, it's kind of like having, uh, what do you, uh, what's the difference between like sweet and, oh, onions. Like having sweet onions, you have to eat them, you know, in the season pretty much versus keeper onions, uh, which kind of keeps, so it's okay. similar between those grapes, I think. <laughs> the, anyway, right the here. of the grape world. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is one of our kiwis. So we've got a fuzzy and a non-fuzzy, and I can't even pronounce the names. Yeah. They're amazing. Um, but you have to have a female and a male too. Yeah, so we have the other over here. And by the way, back here is a native red elderberry. Yeah. Very medicinal, but not well, edible. Well, no, we don't use it at all for yeah. anything, but we have it just because it's beautiful. And, and of course, back here is a quince that we had, and another quince. We may use them to graft sometime something else onto it. Um, but yeah, anyway, kiwis. Ah, getting that's stuck. Quince. quince is so sharp. Yeah, right <laughs> I got in it. Oh, all right, yeah. These are Aronia yeah, berries. And they're just starting to flower. Oh, they yeah. form these lovely clusters of dark, dark blue um, fruit mm -hmm. that is much better 
eaten uh, frozen and then baked into something. That's true. <laughs> or, or just fresh baked into yeah. something. Oh, also, can we go look for that salamander that I put underneath to see if it's still here? Because, again, on that amphibian hunt, we forgot to find amphibians because <laughs> we were mostly falling water. I'm sure it's probably it's not still here. here anymore. But I'll take a look underneath. You put it underneath that black. That's right. And, of course, you'll notice there are some really beautiful... Not there? Mi nope. Mm -hmm. Beautiful melodies. Keep taking it off just in case it's down further. Or I'm sure. They range Shoot. quite far, so okay. I'm not surprised that it's not there. Oh, well. All right. But always look before you dig into places like that. Can you do the clicker? Oh, yeah, yeah. All righty. Um, so in front here, we just never want to cut this down. It's an old cherry. It's so beautiful uh, when it's just gorgeous. gorgeous. It's yeah. All right. So now we're going to go plant a tree. And uh, has anybody in there um, commented on Facebook yet of what, uh, where trees come from or where actually any plant, go ahead, comes from? Where's the mass of the tree come from? <laughs> Are you asking me that? No, I'm asking no, everybody on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Kim, you already yeah, know, right? Oh, I know. Of course <laughs> I know. All right. Well, right here, um, we love our neighbors across the fence. Um, however, you know, who knows how long they're going to live there. And they can see right into where we mainly go in and out all the time. And so, also we have our um, garbage situation right here. And so we, oh, part of our not... permaculture plan... There's something going on That's here. That's right. Just leave it. It's not... I just have to leave it. So um, and uh, right here, okay. uh, we kind of want to cover this garbagey area a little bit. And so this is perfect for, we didn't think, by the way, over here is a cedar tree by, by the van. Oh. And that is our wedding tree. And we've been married 10 and a half years. And so that's how tall it's gotten in 10 years. And everybody's like, oh, don't put it there. It's on the south side. It's going to shade too much. Well, it gets broiling hot over here. And so it's, um, and also it does not shade at all. I mean, someday we might have to cut it down, but it doesn't shade at all during the summer. And so uh, we uh, really love them uh, over here. It just helps protect for a bunch of different reasons. So to, um, oh, can you grab the shovel? Um, in order to plant a tree properly so it doesn't die, that's why we're doing this. Um, and again, be thinking, where do trees come from? Uh, you know, when they get so giant and massive. If it came out of the ground, it would be a huge hole in the ground where there are trees. But instead, trees actually lift the ground up by creating roots. And so I'm going to um, get this out of here. This is sort of a cross between a bare root lesson and a potted lesson. Ooh. This one, look at how big this tree got with such little soil. Ooh, I it's feel amazing. So mean. Uh, I know. And anyways, the what you need to do is free the roots and get the roots going straight out. That is what's going to um, keep your tree from dying. It's all about the roots. And so we gotta pull these roots apart. And Kimmer, could you dig a hole here while I do that? Or should I dig a hole and you pull it? <laughs> you should dig the hole. All right. this is gonna be like also, you do not want to add any um, soil, you know, like uh, potting soil or anything like that because you need the tree to not get want to stay root bound. It, you want it to stretch out and go look for nutrients. And so, um, yeah, right along the old, right here I think is a good spot. Yep, and a nice visual block someday. You gotta get underneath here. Okay, so while we're digging, I'm gonna kinda answer that question, where do trees come from? Where do plants come from? The reason that trees are so great for sequestering carbon, we got to get underneath this gravel layer because someday, way in the past, Kim's grandparents probably laid some gravel, gravel down there. there. Hang on, got to get it underneath that. Um, anyway, so trees and other plants. Of course, they the new the mass of them can't come from the ground, otherwise. There again would be a big hole there. And it doesn't come from the water because you know why? Water is made of H2O. Uh, two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. And that's not what creates masses of hard structure. You know what does? Carbon. Carbon does. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's a lot of carbon in the ground, but that's not where 
trees get their carbon to create their mass. Now, if they fill up a little bit of nutrients, obviously, from the ground, so there's a small percentage of other minerals, but they, where do they get their carbon? Well, you know where this is going, directly out of thin air. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely incredible. Um, so they pull it out of thin air by uh, the process of photosynthesis, as you may have learned. But the thing about when we learned about photosynthesis in school, we never really talked about the, that it's a miracle that it comes right out of the air, uh, this carbon. So it pulls out CO2, which is uh, carbon with two parts oxygen. It, the process of photosynthesis, using the energy of the sun's light, breaks apart the carbon from the oxygen, sends the oxygen back out into the air. For an, that's how animals were able to evolve and develop. It's incredible. And pulls the carbon into and creates glucose mo molecules, which is mainly carbon. Big, long uh, mix of carbon and other things in order to create glucose mo molecules and puts them into its structure. And think of a cedar tree. It can live a couple thousand years. And these are western red cedars in our area, our native cedar tree. It can live a couple thousand years old. Can you imagine sequestering? It? And by the way, they did a study about the older a tree, like a cedar tree gets, does it pull in less or more carbon? Each year, more carbon. Well, the bigger the growth ring, obviously, the more carbon is going to pull in in that particular year, depending on the conditions. But, uh, oh, look at that. The roots are looking pretty good. Can I know. We are sending this whole thing free. Yeah. Guys, yeah, yeah, man, they put in a lot of crap here. Uh oh. <laughs> Send one up to your grandfather. All right. Uh, you may have to. Get underneath. Um, and, uh, so. Yeah, that's where trees come from and actually all plants. The thing about annual plants like potatoes is that they, animals like bugs and other things, fungus, decompose them so that carbon, as animals, like little micro microscopic animals, decompose them and then kick the carbon back out into the air. And so animals don't really reduce the overall carbon footprint of the atmosphere but trees do because it pulls them in. And then cedar trees, they don't decompose. They are like antifungal. And so they can fall over after 2,000 years and still that carbon is sequestered for another few hundred years while it's super slowly um, decomposing. Now there's another way to actually get it to uh, sequester forever. And that's called a process you can do called biochar, which we may do around the campfire one of these days. Yeah, and um, well, let me get it down a little further. But in nature, guess what biochar is? Coal. Coal. And that's why what if people are digging up to burn over the last 150 years. You gotta leave that stuff in the ground. And oil. Oil is even more refined, uh, developed. Wow. Didn't get under that. <laughs> Oh. That is impressive. Alright. Well, we may have to just uh, We're gonna have to yeah, dig some this more. Yeah, I had no idea out. it was going to be that gravelly. So, um, when this goes in the ground, it no, can't go any here. further than that, anyways. It has to, the top, you know, the base of the tree where, the, where it was used to growing, has to be at ground level. It can't be down too far. Or at least when you put in your soil, it can't come, your soil can't come up here at all. And you got to get pull all of these out and actually cut some of them off if they're too and long. And we'll let rough up the ground around it a bit oh, yes. because you don't this want it like the roots out. are growing into a cement wall. You want it to be nice and receptive to the roots continuing out into it. So we wrap up the ground all around it, um, and then we spread out all the roots in different layers as we slowly add this dirt back into the hole around it so that all the uh, roots would have layers of soil between the different roots so it's all nice and spread out beautifully and we're only going to put any we're probably not going to put back in no, this gravel I mean, put that but in. we are going to put dirt back in that is what it's going to find underneath the ground right here uh, we actually are going to use probably mole dirt <laughs> from the mole hills and stuff all right well anyways
Let's, uh, we're going to have to spend some time we'll show you tomorrow, cutting and pulling these out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And getting these long. Now, that's going to be too long to plant. Yeah. And so Check we're going out. to, what you do is you just cut it off at where there's just below some of the wood like that. And then discard that. Because otherwise that will wrap around and kill the tree. Unless you could dig a tunnel for it. Yeah, you could dig a tunnel way, way out. But you don't need to. They don't mind having their roots trimmed. It's kind of like getting a haircut, sort of. <laughs> well, let's set it in there, okay. and then we'll sing to it. This song is by Dana Lyons from Bellingham, Washington. He's famous for Cows with Guns song. Which is really funny. And Kim will show you the book that was okay. written in association with I'm just gonna put this on and hold it up. Pete Seeger, Julia Butterfly Hill. Oh, uh, yeah, and no, his, that's a good book. Yes, and his close friend probably... Um, he just sang to his close friend Jane Goodall. Um, oh, this is what he sang as a yeah. lullaby to her yeah. for her it's birthday. A lullaby for his birthday a couple days ago, and I put a link to that to his Facebook page yeah. for that version. Now I should know this by heart, but I'm going to just put this here in case. I know it's backwards. All right. Sorry, it's backwards, but you can still look at the pictures. How can I do this around you? I 
everybody, go to Dan the Lions' website and buy that book if you can. Support him because he and all the other artists that you know can't be doing their gigs right now and that's how most people in the music industry make their money nowadays is going around doing gigs because those uh, clicks that you do listening to their stuff, they only get a millimeter of a penny barely on those. And so um, go and uh, all my favorite performers from Bellingham, Dana Lyons, Will Canem, down here in Tacoma now is Jean Tagaban, yeah. uh, Peter Ali, Peter Ali uh, with the beautiful native flute in Snohomish County. Um, Tim Noah. Yeah, Tim Noah and Cindy Soup. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's no homage. Yeah, buy their music if you can or, you know, download. Make sure you click on Share their stuff. Share it with your friends. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Go to their websites. Um, oh, yeah. Got to support them during this time. They're, think about the small businesses that are hurting in your town right now. And then think about those venues that they normally go to. They can't be in operation and they can't perform either. So go and uh, support them as much as you can. Just donate directly to them, actually. Mm -hmm. Keep them going during this time. Um, and if they're doing any live performances, you know, listen to them, donate, contribute directly sure, to them. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, we did that for uh, Mike Love uh, when he did a live performance the other day on mm -hmm. Facebook. It was on, no, on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. And so um, also support us if you want. <laughs> if you have any money or income at this time, um, you can click on the link as well as please go to YouTube. We need a thousand subscribers. We're not quite at a 500 yet right now. Uh, in order to live broadcast to YouTube from out in the field. And speaking of which, we're going to be out in the field tomorrow tracking animals. Yes. We were out there checking out today. It's so oh, amazing. We get their favorite tracking site closest to where we live. And um, let's just say it was super, super cool. There were two different kinds of tracks that I almost had never seen. So definitely join us out there. Join us tomorrow, 6 o'clock. Uh, we're going to try to live stream actual live animal tracking and trailing, my favorite thing to do. All right, thanks everybody. Be well, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.